Hey players, this is Brit at Gamesboro once again, and today I have a special treat for you. We're going to set up Fantasy Star Online with all the bells and whistles for portable Android devices. After this video, you should have the following up and running. Touchscreen keyboard support. Widescreen support. Online play with auto connection to private servers. Upgraded background music quality. Offline map pack. Offline quest pack and other quality of life improvements to the base game. While this guide covers Android in particular, I think it is worth noting that anything using RetroArch and a touchscreen that has enough power to run the game will get the job done. This includes handhelds like the Steam Deck. Even if you're using a Linux-based handheld, you could skip the parts about configuring the on-screen keyboard and in theory, you should be good to go as well. Everything you will see today in this video, I've built on an Anbernic RG557. The requirements to get the most out of this guide are as follows. An Android portable device with at least one analog stick, a D-pad, four face buttons, left and right trigger, start button, internet access, and a touchscreen. You will also need the patched Dreamcast version of Fantasy Star Online V2 with Enhancement Pack by Ives. You can find that link in the description or pause the video and type it into your browser. You will also need the key that came with your original copy of the game, or the public key I put in the description that 100% of you will use. If you are using an Android emulation device, you most likely already have RetroArch, but if you don't, I'll have the link in the description. This guide does not cover RetroArch installation, but many, many guides exist online for that, so you should be covered. Let's get to these first steps. Click the link in the description as I mentioned earlier to download the RAR file. Open the RAR file and go into the folder Ives underscore PSOV2 underscore US underscore R2 underscore EP and copy the CDI file that ends in IvesPatch.CDI and put it into wherever you house your Dreamcast games on your device. This is the end result of what the on-screen keyboard will look like in the game. It'll be emulating an actual Dreamcast keyboard and makes it very easy to communicate. Just tap the upside down V at the bottom of the screen and start typing. But first, let's install Flycast. All you have to do for Flycast is basically open RetroArch and uh, once you have that pulled up, you're gonna hit Online Updater and then from there, you're going to go to Core Downloader. And then you want to scroll all the way down to the Sega cores. And you'll see one for Dreamcast and Aomi called Flycast. And that's the one that you want to pick. Right here. So just install that bad boy. And uh, really, you just want to back out of the system at that point. That's all you need to do in here. Next up is Dreamcast keyboard and widescreen support. Uh, this one's going to be a bit of a marathon, um, but we'll get through it. Go ahead and open up the game. Once the game finishes loading, we're going to you want to go to Quick Menu, go down to Core Options, go down to Emulation Hacks, go down to Widescreen Hack and enable it. You won't need the option above it, widescreen cheats. You won't need that. So go back to the quick menu. Go down to on screen overlay. And make sure these options match what I have here. Uh, the most important being overlay uh, opacity, set it to uh, 0.70. And overlay preset, make sure it's set to big. Uh, you'll go up a couple of directories and uh, go to Modular Keyboard, and then under Opaque, you'll pick Big. You have a couple of other options in here you need to watch out for. Show Overlay Behind Menu and Hide Overlay In Menu. You want those both enabled. Show Inputs From Port is hugely important. Make sure that that's set to 2. Okay, now we're gonna back it up. 
to quick menu again. Go to uh, to the right and then to input. And then from here, you want to go to hotkeys. You'll see a few options at the top here. I'm not worried about uh, about these. Uh, quit, controller, combo, start and select, that's fine. But what we want to do is make sure that uh, all of these hotkeys uh, below this, below quit here, are disabled. And the reason why is because if it's set as a keyboard shortcut, there's a chance when you're typing on the overlay, it will take an action that you don't want. So make sure that all of those are clear and then go ahead and back up one menu, back up another, and back up to quick menu again, and then go down to overrides, and save game overrides. This is gonna make sure that this saves it just for Fantasy Star Online. Back it up to the quick menu. Go down to controls. Go to port one controls. Device type, you want to make sure it's set as controller. It should be by default. Mapped port. Set this to 2. It won't be like this by default, so you want to definitely change this to 2. Back it up, go down to port 2 controls. Device type, you want to make sure this is set to keyboard. And then mapped port, you want this to be mapped to port 1. Back it up. Go to manage remap files. And right here it says remove game remap file, which it'll say on yours, save game remap file. You want to hit it. Sometimes the remappings won't save properly, so double check these to make sure that they are set okay. Now go back to the quick menu. Go to the right. This time you want to go to user interface. Anything that says it's going to pause content, go ahead and disable it. You cannot pause anything in this game. If you do, it can potentially corrupt your save games. Um, it'll definitely disconnect you. Those are the settings that we're most concerned about. Um, after that, you want to go back, then go down to configuration. As you can see here, we've got... Uh, uh, load override and load remap files, those two settings. Make sure that those are both enabled. You want that to happen automatically when you start the game. Now go back to quick menu. Then go down to overrides and hit save game overrides again, just to make sure that all of our configurations are saved. Now we're gonna move into performance settings. Go to the quick menu, and then to core options. From there you wanna go to video. Remember the settings here are for my preferences on the Anbernic RG557. You may wanna tweak these settings to your own liking. Go back to core options, and then to performance. Disabling threaded rendering made a massive difference in the frame rate for me. So if you were experiencing slow frame rates, try disabling this. Now, go back to core options, and then back one more time to quick menu. Go down to overrides, and hit save game overrides one last time before we jump into the game. Okay, now that you're in the game, we gotta go ahead and hit new game. 
Your little message is going to come up here telling you that you, need, that you need a serial number and access key. Just press A. Uh, you will see that port B is highlighted. Go ahead and click that. Uh, it's going to start saving uh, your, um, your initial save file to the memory card. And once that's done, the movie's going to load up. You can skip it. So let's go ahead and make a character. We're just going to go ahead and use the generic one here. Well, he's not generic, he's just the default. Notice here, this is the on-screen keyboard uh, that's built into the Dreamcast. And um, as you can see, you can still use it. It's just slow. Not particularly great. I wonder how much faster it would be if we just used the, uh, the actual keyboard that we set up. Let's give it a test run. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. Okay, you want to hit online mode? then you want to hit yes. Just press A. Enter in the register serial number as you see here for E62F237. The letters are all uppercase. Your access key can be found in the, um, in the notes below in the description, but I'll also give them to you here. Lowercase o, capital W, lowercase u, lowercase r, four, uppercase W, uppercase J, lowercase g. Once you have that, just press A or enter. Confirm it. This is the easy part. Just hit ISP1 and hit yes. Hit yes again. Ladies and gentlemen, you are dialing in. So here's what's cool about it. This is gonna dial you in. You didn't have to do any settings or anything outside of making sure that your Wi-Fi is enabled before you load up the game. We're gonna go ahead and jump onto the first ship, go into block one and see if anybody's on. Looks like we've got some folks. Since I'm a noob, I'm gonna go ahead and hit normal. We did it, players. This video has taken me a while to put together because once I got PSO up and running online, I ended up playing it more than working on the actual video. I'm hoping I see a lot of you hitting the server soon as I plan on putting in a lot more quality time with this one. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, or whatever it is that YouTube likes these days.